Good day, everybody, and welcome to our BPM Plus Health virtual coffee session. Uh, the topic for today is a five minute intro to BPMN. So, without any further ado, uh, let me go ahead and do this quick introduction for you all. So, BPMN stands for Business Process Model Annotation, and it's a standard published by the Object Management Group which is a, a standard development organization, and it's a open standard, meaning that you can, anybody can go and access the specification. The URL is just at the bottom of the page here. Uh, you can go and download the specification. So what is BPMN? Ba basically, BPMN offers a single visual process knowledge artifact for both humans and machines. So, on the one end, it offers a visual story of what needs to be done. And on the other end for machine, it offers a portable execution semantic for automation. So, it has that duality uh, for us. So, why uh, BPMN matters? Uh, because BPMN offers an unambiguous format for modeling processes. It also offers a file format that can be interchanged between the different vendors' products, and it provides a common and readily transferable set of skills that are learned by subject matter experts. And I've been arguing for many, many years that this third point here is the most important. Uh, the BPMN standard is being taught by many different organizations. Uh, there's a uh, a plethora of, of books. I think there's over a hundred books on BPMN, uh, so people can learn BPMN. And whenever somebody, some of your resource leave uh, that are the BPMN expert, the next BPMN expert can be found in the market. So this is a very important factor for all organizations. Uh, what is BPMN? Uh, BPMN is fundamentally a language for describing operations. Uh, it basically prescribes what the next task to do is. Uh, it's a mean to an end, uh, meaning that we should model for a purpose. Uh, and what are your purposes for documentation or for automation? Uh, this will drive how you use BPMN. It's a tool, not a solution, uh, meaning that you require domain knowledge and modeling skills to properly create uh, BPMN models. So what's very nice about BPMN is that there are only four basic shapes that you need to know. Whenever you see a circle in BPMN, it means an event. There are various types of circles, uh, but they're all events. Whenever you see a rounded rectangle shape, that means an activity. Again, there are different types of activities, but whenever you see a rounded rectangle, it's an activity. Whenever you see a diamond, uh, it's about route, it's a routing gateway. And uh, a little note here is that a routed gateway is not the decision in itself. The decision needs to happen before the gateway. The gateway only depicts uh, the possible routes and the logic for taking those routes. Uh, and then the last shape is an arrow. Uh, there's various arrows. Uh, but they all reflect some notions of flows. Uh, there's also a whole set of markers and decorators that are used for more expressiveness in BPMN. But at the base, if you know how to read these four shapes, you know how to read BPMN, or if you know how to write or draw these four shapes, you know how to draw BPMN. So going back to the, one of the first point, it's a visual story about what needs to be done next. We have a single artifact that is both for the subject matter expert and for the automation. So the shape here is a pool, meaning it's representing some external participant. Uh, the start event, which is a circle for an event, triggers the instance. The rounded square or rectangles are tasks to be completed. Uh, the marker here says that this is a service task. The arrow shows us what to do next. Again, a task, this is a PMML or predictive model task, an AI kind of task. Here we have a CQL task. Uh, here we have a little table marker, meaning that this is a decision task. 
And as I mentioned before, the decision is taken prior to the routing behavior. The X here means it's an exclusive choice between the two routes. Uh, we have case task. A sub process with the plus means that there is a uh, further breakdown of this activity here that is defined in details. Dog ear shape is the data coming in. Again, a dotted arrow as a flow. Um, a dash arrow with an open head is an external communication via a message flow. And again, a circle, an intermediate event. And again, another type of circle, an end event. So circles are events, rectangles, rounded rectangles are activities, uh, diamond shapes are routing, and uh, the arrows are meaning the flow. And BPMN has a token semantic. That means that you have to think of a token traversing the path. And then when it gets to a routing point, if it's an exclusive, it takes only one path all the way to the end. And so that's how uh, the semantic of execution of uh, BPMN works. Now, BPMN, as I mentioned in the introduction, is both for documentation and automation. And, and what's the difference? Basically, most of the time when you're modeling for documentation, your goal is to make the diagram be as unambiguous and clear at specifying the logic of the process. Uh, we do recommend the BPMN method and style approach uh, promoted by Bruce Silver. There's a series of books on method and style that will help you making sure that your BPMN model captures everything that you want it to uh, communicate. When you're looking at automation, uh, automation requires explicit specification of the data and their types. Uh, so that's maybe not needed when you're doing documentation, but certainly needed when you're doing uh, modeling for automation. And then the engine will orchestrate the nest task to be completed. So in the notion I was mentioning before, the engine basically moves the token for you and either gets the next, the next activity completed by some service or offers it to a user or a group of users to complete that. Uh, there's a nice blog post at the URL at the bottom here that discusses the difference between uh, modeling for documentation and modeling for automation. And that's basically it for my introduction to uh, BPMN in five minutes.